Hello. Uh, so if you're wondering why I'm at the start of this video, because I don't normally do this, um, I just wanted to kind of do a bit of a disclaimer, if you like. Um, yeah, the, the quality of this video is not fantastic, if I'm being fair. The lighting's not great. Um, I keep getting me fat fingers and hands in the way all the time. Um, so I just wanted to apologise for that. Um, if you do decide to watch it, you know, you're going to have to forgive me for the poor sound and stuff. I mean, people could say that I should buy a better camera or better lighting. But I'm not a professional YouTuber. If I was getting 80,000 views a video, then maybe I'd do that. But, you know, for the few hundred views that I'm going to get, if I get that many, <laughs> uh, it's just not worth it for me uh, to buy all that stuff. So please take from this what you will. Um, it's not, you know, it's not horrendous. I was going to scrap it, but it took such a long time to film that I've decided to put it out there anyway. Uh, you might be able to get some hints and tips from it, hopefully. Uh, and if not, you know, just don't watch it. Simple as that. Anyway, on to the video. Good day, everyone. So I'm going to run through how I speed paint my brown horses. Uh, now, this isn't the be all and end all. Uh, it's just the way I do it. So take from it where you will. I'm not a professional painter or a professional YouTuber, which is probably why the lighting's really poor and I'll probably get all my fingers in the way. But anyway, let's get on with it. Uh, so I'm gonna use this flat brown uh, as my base color. You can use any brown really, any dark brown really, or even a, a slightly lighter brown. Uh, in theory, it should still work. I've only ever done one horse before, so we'll, we're gonna learn with this together, aren't we? So, first thing to do is we want to get a nice coat of brown, this dark brown, all over the horse. You don't have to be too neat at this point, as long as you get the paint on there. Because we'll tidy everything else up afterwards. So it's just a case of getting all the brown all over the horsey. Uh, I'm trying to do it so I'm not getting my fingers in the way, but... Oh dear. You get the general idea. You don't need to see me paint the entire horse. It's just a case of, you know, making sure every bit of the brown or every bit of the horse is covered in this brown. Uh, and then I'll wait for that to dry. We'll get on to the next bit, but in the meantime, I'm going to paint all the others. So, in the last part, I did mention that I'd only tried this on one horse. What I meant to say was one regiment, so I've actually done 11 horses, not just the one. Um, so, still in the early stage of experimentation. So now we're going to add the next level, the next colour, which is flat earth. And we're just going to dry brush this on. Uh, so I have my trusty makeup brush. And we're just going to dry brush this pretty much everywhere. Okay, so it's a little bit wet, but that's ooh, a bit too wet there. It's okay. Just a quick, quick overbrush. So it'll leave a lot of the recesses dark. Uh, don't worry about getting it all over everything else. I was going to say we're going to tidy it up afterwards. So that'll do dry brushed uh, and now I'm going to whiz through and dry brush all the others but just before I do that I should really have showed you the triad that I'm using so I'm using flat brown flat earth and orange brown for the horse uh, and if you want to go a lighter shade you could replace that with flat earth as your main colour then orange brown and then bone as your final highlight colour so that will give you a couple of different tones of horses but I'm going for the dark ones because Austrians did like all their horses to be more or less same color uh, so we're going to carry on with this and then I'll show you how we'll vary them up in the final stages right let me carry on with the dry brushing and so with that done which didn't take very long at all we're now going to move on to orange brown so trusty makeup brush and this time we're going to 
put this on even lighter than the last one so I'm going to make sure I get even more paint off and then again concentrating on like the raised areas this time a little bit just a little subtle highlight on his ears Here's So I'm going to crack on, you see it's just, well it's pretty bad, but it's just like a little subtle highlight on everything. So I'm going to crack on do the rest of them. Everybody dry brush. So the next bit I'm going to do is not an optional thing. I'm just going to paint some ribs onto the horse. Uh, I'm trying to do it without getting my fingers in the way and so you can see what I'm doing but it's pretty dark today but let's try for it so I'm just going to put three little lines along here I've watered this paint down a bit more than normal oh this light is so terrible oh hang on hang on, hang on. Uh, yeah just ribs just ribs um, just three little stripes like that. I don't have to go too mad. Oh, my fingers are in the way there, sorry about that. That was terrible. <laughs> right, I'll redo that one. But you get the general idea, we just want to put like a little rib cage on there. Uh, and it will blend in more, it'll be a lot more subtle when you put the wash on. I'm going to crack on, do all of them. Change the camera angle, maybe that will help a bit. As you can see, they are quite subtle from stripes on there now. I've gone over them again, uh, done them in flat brown. It's to know because it's just going to be a subtle highlight. I might have to highlight again with some on, but we shall see. Anyway, I've now divided the horses up. So there's three here, and these are all going to have uh, bleach bone manes and tails. The center group are all going to have flat brown, and the end group are all going to have black. Uh, and that's going to vary the horses up, especially when I put the markings and stuff up on the end. So I'm going to do the black ones last, uh, because when I do the black, I'm going to do all the, which I will show you when I do it, all the reins and stuff. Uh, if you don't want to use black, well, I'm not going to use black anyway, I'm going to use black and grey. But if you want brown leather, then Vallejo leather belt or cavalry, or there is a have a brown I think paint all your reins and stuff with that so let me just crack on and do these I'll, and I'll come back to you when I do the black just blocked in these manes and tails these are dark brown ones it's a little bit wet these are the bone ones so I just got them done ready for the, when the wash goes on so now I'm going to do the black grey uh, and what we're going to do here, excuse fingers and arms in the way, is we could do the manes and tails again. Uh, but also, put too much paint on there. We're going to do all the tack, so all the reins and the the uh, you know all the belts and stuff. Uh, I am concentrating primarily on the horses, you will notice, uh, because I want to keep this video short as I possibly can. Um, so I'll do a separate video for the riders, because not everyone's going to be interested in the riders, they just want to learn or see how I paint my horses so I can get them done quickly. It's a lot easier as well when there's not a big phone in, stuck in your face. Uh, so basically we're going to go around and do all the tack on every single one. Even the the ones I've already painted the other colours. So I yeah, don't have to be quite as neat. And we're just going to do all the tails. Can you see what I'm doing? Is my fingers in the way? Yep. You get the general idea, don't you? Uh, and then when you do the mains, just try and be a bit neat. I can't see a thing. Where am I? No. 
Just try and be a bit neat with these because you don't really want to go onto the brown. It's got a little bit of hair there. Uh, and then once we've done all that, uh, we'll go on to doing some markings, but we're only going to do the markings for the black. Any of the other markings we'll do after the ink stage. So I'm going to crack on with that and I'll come back to you when I start putting some markings on the black. All the reins of its pieces done. So you can see it's starting to take shape now. Uh, and the different markings will tie in when they all go into the big unit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do anything with black markings. So the officer, these two, and these two. Just to vary things up. I'm trying to not get my arm in the way this time. Oh! Really not the camera flying. Camera. Phone. So, I'll just show you on this guy. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to give him some black, really long socks. I don't know if they would have been some. There is a. Um, you can actually Google horse markings and stuff and it'll give you all more realistic markings where they should be and the different colour horses and whatnot. Uh should we have two two black socks? Why not? Why not? Uh, the rest of the markings, the cold white and the warm white markings that I'll show you on the other horses when I get to that stage. Uh, I don't start the highlighting with them now. I do that after. So he's got two front black socks and we'll just give him a little bit of a marking on his head. Just on here. Uh. And that'll do. So I'm going to go through and do all the rest of them now. The black markings. And uh, then the only thing left to do on these. Oh look, I'm just a bit there. The only thing left to do on these then is a silver. Uh, and then they'll need an ink. So let me crack on. Right, so silver. Um, so all we're going to do is... Just pick out, try and get it in the right place this time. Just pick out the bits that are silver. Right there, there's a little, little blobby bear. Um, I think there's some buckles. I can't see what I'm doing. Some buckles and stuff. So basically we're just going to go around now and just pick out all the silver. Uh, and then that is as far as we're going to go for now. Uh, and then I will have to do an overall wash. Uh, and we'll get onto the picking out the markings and then the horses are pretty much done. But before I do that, because I'm batch painting these, I've got to paint all the riders. And I will do a separate video of the as I've said, for the riders, if anyone's really interested. Uh, but I don't want this video. It's already going on longer than I wanted. But that's probably because I keep waffling, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, you get the general idea. And then I'll show you when we go to the next stage, all the marks and stuff. So getting it to this stage has took hardly any time at all, maybe an hour. Um, and then doing the markings and stuff, maybe, and the ink, maybe another hour. So two hours to paint all these horses, which I don't think is too bad. Uh, there is, of course, a musician, but I will be doing a separate video again for him. Um, how to paint grey horses, or how I paint grey horses. There's no speed painting method for these, unfortunately. you just got to go with it. Um, but yeah, I'll do that separate because, as I say, I don't want this video to go on too long. Okay, so the model's all ready now for an all over ink and I will be all putting Agrax Earthshade all over them. Straight, neat, out of the bottle. Uh, and then 
all over, everywhere. Sploshing it all over. All over the horse, all over the rider, everywhere. So I'll crack on and do all of these now. Uh, and I will come back to you when they are all dry. So the horses are all inked. Uh, and to be honest, if you wanted to, you could just leave them at this state. And they'll be perfectly acceptable as tabletop standard. Uh, and I don't know if it shows up very well on the camera, but both of these horses are exactly the same brown colour. But because the manes and the tails are different colours, it makes this one look a little bit darker than this one. So you kind of get a slightly different tone. Uh, so, as I say, you could leave them at this stage. But what I'm going to do now is show you how I do all the markings and things and just take them just lift them and take them to the next level so uh, on this guy I've got the black and I could do a little bit of white markings on him as well so I'll show you I do that with cold gray uh, uh, cold white and then on this one I'm gonna dry brush out the tail and the mane and then I'm gonna put some white warm white markings on this guy but let's start with this one So for the cold white markings above his feet, so cold white, warm white, the difference, warm white is like yellow base and it's kind of warm and fluffy. Cold white is gray base, like ice and snow. Uh, and yeah, use gray. So to start off with, I'm using light gray. Uh, hello, where are you? There you are, light gray. And we're just gonna pick out the bottoms of his feet. because uh, he's already got some black on here so I just want to put little white socks at the bottom of this black oh damn it like that more paint required and then what I tend to do is I'll divide them into groups of who's having warm white and who's having cold white. Uh, and the other thing you try and do when you put these socks on is you're trying to get like a wavy line rather than a straight one. Uh, because obviously not much in nature has a dead straight line. So if you, if you can get that line to be a little bit wavy, you just do that by doing up and down strokes like that. Just keep the wavy waviness going. Okay, let that dry and I'll show you the white. And then over the top of the grey, we're going to use Vallejo Off White. And we're going to leave a little bit of the grey showing and just paint all this in white. Remember to water your paints down a little bit. And we're just going to leave a little bit of grey showing here and there. Uh, and I've done this guy's nose, but I have on this one. So on the nose, on the head, again, same sort of principle. Leave a little bit of grey showing. And just paint that in with your off-white. Uh, and then your horses will get a lot of variety by putting different markings in different places. So that's one lot of markings the cold white uh, I'll show you the black next okay so for the black markings I'm not going to do very much at all I've just got some black gray Vallejo uh, and I'm just going to pick out the top edges and feather in a little bit on the bottom but not a lot because I like my blacks to look pretty black so hopefully when the lighting's a bit better, I'll be able to take some stills and you'll be able to see that a lot better. So I'm going to do that on all the black horses. I've got them in the little group there. So on these horses with the um, bone colored manes and tails, I'm going to just dry brush up the tails. Just a little bit off his leg. 
too much paint on here. Just going to dry brush these bits up. And I'll do that on all of them. Just to give it a bit of depth. And then finally, I'm going to give it a very, very light dry brush of off-white. Uh, just stick to the tips of the, the mane. Just again, just to give it a little bit more of a 3D look. So for the warm white markings, we're going to start off with a base of yellow ochre. And again, it's just picking out um, little areas where you think there might be markings like socks and whatnot. And these are all obviously going to be white. Uh, yeah, so just pick these out again. Try and get wavy lines at the top because you don't want straight ones. And I'll crack on. Oops. And as before, we then go over this with off-white. Just leaving a little bit of the yellow ochre showing through. So I'll crack on and do the rest. So you could at this point call them all the horses done. Um, and that would be again, perfectly acceptable for tabletop standard. Uh, but I am going to do a couple more things uh, and that is I'm going to paint in eyes uh, I'm going to paint in the teeth uh, and the reason is uh, obviously horses eyes you don't ever really see the whites of the eyes if they're in distress or you know panicking or something uh, but I think it just brings the horse to life I don't paint eyes on the men because I can't be bothered with that <laughs> it's too much of a pain but the horse's eyes are quite large, so I'm going to paint them in, and uh, that'll be my final stage. I have a feeling this might be quite difficult to do on camera, but I shall try. So we're going to just paint in all of that area, the big eyeball, in black. Just wait for that to dry. I'm going to do all the others, I'll come back. Okay, so we're going to paint the eyes and what we're trying to do is just catch the, the actual ball of the eye itself so we just want to put a little bit of white on there that's it just like that and the other side of course you should do the other side off camera <laughs> it's a lot easier so the white's painted on. So the next thing to do is to draw a black line right through the middle of that white. And you want to obscure most of the white. So right way through, so it doesn't look like a startled rabbit. That's it, and you just want a tiny, come on focus, tiny little bit of the white showing. And it just, Brings the model to life just having that flush of white eye. And so next we're going to paint the horse's teeth. Uh, and then after that, there's just one last thing to do. All right. well, these fiddly bits are really hard to do on camera. So I'm using bleach bone for the horse teeth because, you know, horses don't use pearl drops. So I'll do the rest of them. So the last thing I need to do on these riders now is just the bits of silver. So he's got like a buckle um, on his head. So we're just going to paint either side of that buckle. And there's that there. It's a bit kind of blobby on the front. Uh, so I'm going to go around and paint all of the silver bits and that is the horses complete. So then I'll have a think. So I was deciding whether to paint the riders and then show you all the finished horses but I'm just going to do it like this. 
uh, and paint the rise in the video because I'm going to take a bit of a break from painting the rest of these cavalry just because I've got something else I want to get finished. So you can see the different varieties uh, and that's just basically just putting different markings on gives you a good bit of variety with all your horses they all look very slightly different even though they are all exactly the same base color it's a pretty quick and easy method of painting you get quite a nice brown hue well i think you do um, and as i say you know you're only looking at two two and a half hours to paint all the horses obviously more to do the riders and the, the saddles and blankets and stuff but you get the general idea. So, yeah. If anyone's wondering why I didn't do the saddle cloths, I don't know if I already mentioned this. Uh, but, yeah, I, I just forgot. And also, if you're painting Dark Ages or Norman Cavalry or Roman Cavalry, they'll all have different saddles and blankets. So, um... Yeah, that's why I didn't do it. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. So there you have it. Painting, speed painting brown horses. The way I do it, I mean, you could just use contrast paint and that would probably be even quicker. But if you can use contrast, I would suggest if you're using the, uh, the bone or the, or the grey, but then doing a xenophil highlight and then putting your contrast paints on. I reckon that should work quite well. But this is how I do it. Uh, conventional paints. Uh put some stills on at the end thank you very much for enduring this video and, and watching all the way to the end if you're still here uh, i hope you picked up something from it uh, yeah as i say i'm not the best painter in the world or certainly no expert but uh yeah i just came up with this idea and i thought i oh, know i'm gonna i'm gonna share this with the group and see what they think so let me know in the comments below what you think um and i will catch you all in the next one bye for now